Hi, welcome to PV202 System Design Voltage Drop Calculations. In this section we'll cover how to upsize a conductor when we're running great distances. Before we've talked about environmental conditions based on temp temperature and pipe fill, now we're looking at distance. Things you'll need for this section, you'll need the 2017 NEC codebook and table 31015B16 ampacity tables on page 150. And you'll need Chapter 9, Table 8, Conductor Properties, page 689. Now, I did not hand out that section, that particular table in class. You can Google up NEC, Chapter 9, Table 8, Conductor Properties, and it'll have the same chart. All right, voltage drop calculations. So nowhere in the codebook does it say you have to limit voltage drop from point A to point B to a certain percentage. But it is the, ma uh, the equipment manufacturers that say you, you need to supply X amount of voltage between this voltage and this voltage. You need to supply to our equipment for it to operate correctly. But it is generally accepted that we, we will limit voltage drop from 3 to 5%. Now, in the renewable energy world, we want to limit our voltage drop to 3 to 5% based upon the fact that we want to get as many electrons off our array or off our wind machine, whatever, to the outlet, to the utility. So we don't want to waste any. And so if we have great distances to cover, hundreds of feet or thousands of feet, we have to upsize the conductor in order to manage the losses in our conductor run. So this is the process. The formula is 2 kil over VD equals C mil. I'm going to put into my into this formula the parameters for my for my system. What am I trying to do? What is the voltage I'm trying to get from point A to point B? What is the current? What is the distance? Uh, and the end result will be the cross-sectional area or the diameter measured in C mils. Okay, looking at the formula, 2 is the multiplier for the length of the conductor run out and back. So I, I'm going to measure the distance one way out, but this 2 is going to take care of, of the, the additional run coming back. So I have to account for out and back. K is the K constant for the conductor. Copper con, uh, K constant is going to be 12.9. Aluminum is going to be 21. And this is at 75 degrees C. So we have to use 75 degrees C ampacity tables because of our lugs that we're uh, terminating on. So just stick with these numbers. If you There's a different number for 90 degrees C insulation as well. But this K constant, if you're using copper, is always going to be 12.9. I is current. Amount of current I want to run through this conductor. L is the length of the conductor run one way. Voltage drop on the denominator is the percent of nominal voltage. So if I'm trying to get 3% of, or let's say 5%, the math is a little bit easier, 5% of 120 would be what? 10% uh, of 120 would be 12, 5% would be 6. So my denominator would be 6, or 5% of 120 volts. And then the answer will be given to me in cross-sectional or C-mill number. All right, step one, determine the length, current, and percent of nominal voltage. Run the calculation. Step two, look up the C mill or the answer from that equation. Chapter nine, table eight, conductor properties, third column. So I'm going to go to back to page 689. Look at the third column and ma match up a C mill number with a, a gauge number. Step three, identify the AWG or the gauge size that is equal to or greater than the C mill calculated in my uh, equation. Number four, step four, identify the ampacity of the conductor sized in chapter nine, table eight, using identified conductor table uh, ratings of 60, 75, or 90. So I'm going to go to, go to, from chapter nine, table eight, I'm going to go to my table 31015B16 and identify a conductor that can handle or identify the ampacity of that particular conductor. And then after that, step five, you apply any 
any uh, ambient temperature D rates or pipe fill D rates. Here's an example. I have 250 feet wire run one, di one direction, 15 amps. I'm going to limit voltage drop to 3% uh, of 240 volts. Here's my formula. 2 kill VD equals C mil. I set it up. I always have 2. If I have copper, it's my K constant is always 12.9. Now I'm entering in my current that I need. I need to get 15 amps at over at far yonder distance of 200 feet, 250 feet away. I'm going to have 3% of, of 240 volts, which is 7.2 volts. So I multiply 2 times 12.9 times 15 times 250. That equals 96,750. The denominator is going to be 7.2. I divide 7.2 into 96,750 and it equals 13,437.5 C mills. All right, I already pulled up the table 8, chapter 9, page, uh, what, 689. And I'm looking at the table. The left-hand column is my gauges. My second column is millimeters squared, or the cross-sectional area of the conductor. The third column is the C-mills, or the cross-sectional area of the conductor in C-mills. So I run my finger down that column looking for a C-mill rating of a gauge that's at least 13,437 or larger. And here I am, bingo. The conductor size I need is 16,510 C mils. Run my finger to the left, it's a number 8 conductor. A number 8 conductor would suffice carrying my 15 amps from point A to point B 250 feet away with a minimum of 3% voltage drop. And that's how you do it. Example 2. I have 250 feet of wire run, 15 amps again, 3% voltage drop, but now I decrease the voltage to 120 volts. We're going to run a temperature correction and a, a pipe fill correction with this in, in addition. So I'm going to figure out what is the size of conductor I need to get 15 amps from here to there. Then I'm going to apply conditions of use. So this might be on a rooftop or south side of a building that I'm running my pipe, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, four conductors in a pipe. Here's the process. Here's my formula. I plug in my numbers. I still have the number two. I still have 12.9. I still have 15 amps that I'm running in this scenario, and I still have 250 feet in this scenario. That still is 96,750 when I multiply them across. But I reduce the, the voltage to 120 volts. 3% of 120 volts. So 3% of 120 volts is 3.6 volts. That's my denominator. I divide 96,750 by 3.6 and I get a C mil of 26,875. I go to my chapter 9, table 8, run my finger down the C mil column looking for something greater than 26,875. Here's a 26,240, but due to the parameters that I established that I, I can't take that conductor. I, personally, I would, but I have to bump up to the next one in size, 41,740. If I want to limit my, my voltage drop to only 3%, I would choose this number 4 conductor right here. So my number 4 conductor is the one I'm going to use. Next up, I go to my table 31015B16 ampacity table, run my finger down the column to the 75 degree insulation column, and a number 4 copper conductor will handle 85 amps. So I need a conductor that can handle 85 amps to get 15 amps from point A to point B at this lower voltage. All right, so now I'm going to temperature correct that 85 amps by looking at my temperature correction table. I run down the right hand column for looking for my what 110 
degrees temperature and my correction my temperature correction is 0 0.82 85 divided by 0 0.82 equals 103 now I'm going to go to table 31015b3a and look for the, the correction factor for four current carrying conductors in a pipe. I do that and I find that it's 0.8 or 80 percent. So now I take my 103 amps divided by 0.8 and I get 128.8 amps. So I need a conductor that can handle 128.8 amps running through these conditions running 250 feet from point A to point B. If I you, uh, so I go back to table 31015B16, run my finger down the 75 degree column, and I find that I need a number one conductor to get 15 amps 250 feet away through 150 degree, 110 degree ambient air temperature and four current carrying conductors in a pipe. And that's how you do it. Here it is all laid out for you. These are all the, the equations we've used so far in this class. Uh, here's the temperature correction calculations, temperature coefficient calculations for a string. I'm going to divide the answer from this to get my number of modules in a, in a string. I'm going to take to get module maximum voltage in a, in a string. I'm going to take module VOC corrected times the number of modules in a string to get Vmax. Yeah, Vmax. Imax is short circuit current times 1.25. Current constant is short circuit current times 1.25 by multiplied by one, another 1.25. Max inverted output current is nameplate rating of the continuous output and current times 1.25 for continuous duty. And now you have this last equation, which is 2 kill VD equals C mills. There you go. Good luck and have fun doing your ampacity conduct calculations.